Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about frame rates and bit rates and what's the best one for your videos. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi, my name's Danielle, welcome to Creator Answers. In this one we're going to be talking about, well, bit rates and frame rates and what sort of settings you should be using for your camera. Because there is so much confusion as to what you should do, people just don't seem to understand the settings they have in their cameras. And that's understandable because with shutter speed and with bit rate and frame rate, it can all get a little confusing. So I'm not going to cover shutter speed in this one, I'm not going to cover more traditional uh, photography topics. This is just about the video section, first of all, although we'll be covering more about aperture and experience exposure settings forthcoming videos. In this one I'm just going to talk about well primarily frame rates and what you use them for. Most professionals will tell you that you have to shoot everything in 24p. Now 24p, when we're talking about the p here we're talking we're basically talking about frames per second. Now 24p is a classic cinema frame rate it's been used for a very long time and generally speaking it was regarded at the number of frames per second where the human eye could no longer tell that it was a series of still images. Now in the old days of cinema when you had film going through a projector basically what happened is that you see an old school cinema film with pic little pictures and those peg wheels down the side. Now the way that basically works is that film is run through a projector and it's timed so that for a fraction of a second actually a, a 24th of a second a still frame is held in front of the lens. Then a plate comes down the next piece of film is moved into the frame the gate opens again for a 24th of a second it shuts, the next frame opens, and that's why you see a series of images, not like a rolling blur. That shutter opens and closes on the projector, and it gives the illusion of motion. What you're actually seeing is a series of still pictures at high speed, because it's so fast, it looks like it's motion. Now, there is a little flicker there, but our, our brain adjusts to it. However, when we see old films, we are used to that flicker, and so that's, you know, we just accept it. Now, times have moved on, and we're using monitors which are capable of running at hundreds of megahertz and can display hundreds of frames per second but for most of the video we watch we still use 24p and that's fine a lot of professionals will tell you that you have to use 24p for that standard classy film cinematic look shoot everything in 24p and you know what i can't really argue with that but i don't do that i shoot everything for film like what you're watching right now at 30p 30p is faster it's it, for me it's easier with flicker it it's easier with my running monitors in the background. 24p I would get some flicker there. It's better with my lights. There are problems which come in in America and the UK. In the UK on the PAL system we don't by default have 30p. We have 24, 25 and 50. We skip 30 altogether. And some cheap lights can give you flickering if you set your camera to NTSC to America mode to 30p mode. So keep that in mind. This may be something you want to consider if you're getting flickering from your lights. However I shoot pretty much all my video at 30p. I like the look. It's faster. It's not blurred. That being said, when I say all, I shoot some outdoor shots. If I want to, if I want that cinematic look, I will drop down to 24p or I can just shoot in 30p and change it in Premiere to render 24p. Now there are some things that you get with 24p that you don't get in 30p and that's a, some motion blur sometimes, some softening of the image, which may be what you want. It's down to you. I personally tend to prefer 30p. Now then, the next question is why not 60p or 120p or 200p why don't we go for these crazy high frame rates but they look unnatural to a lot of people they just look like fast they're not but it looks odd I do use 60p and 100p but that's mainly for special effects shots but I know I'm going to slow that down later for a special effects slow-mo effect when I've tried shooting in video it just looks well weird Peter Jackson released The Hobbit in a 60p version and people went mental I saw it and I was like oh this is so weird it kind of looks like it's in fast forward now games for whatever reason are absolutely fine at high frame rates games will play at 60p very very well that's the target place for a game to run at but even then here's the weird thing a lot of video effects will add motion blur to still make the game look like it's running at 24p it'll soften the image to give it a fake cinematic effect even though it's running at 60p or 60 frames a second or higher that's just you know what it is. So that's where your frame rates come in. Just jot this down. 24p for a classic cinematic slightly blurred motion blurred effect. 
it looks nice. 30p for high speed modern video screens, phones, uh, modern color televisions, you know, LCDs, plasmas, L LEDs, that sort of thing. Computer screens, 30p loves that. Higher, 60p or 100p, use that for your special effects shots or your slow motion shots. My advice would be shoot everything in 30p and downscale the 24p if you want to get that cinematic effect after. But play with it, your mileage may vary. So the next question I get is what bit rate should I use? Aim for 50 meg as your minimum. You can go high, you can go to 100. I do use 100 sometimes and even higher on the Panasonic that's got a much higher frame rate. But if you set a 50 meg frame rate with a high color range, so HDR, so you've got crisp, sharp whites, blacky blacks, nice dark, deep blacks, you're going to be good. You're going to get a very, very high quality image and make sure when you're encoding you use a, a very high quality encoder which will take full use of that higher bit rate. You can drop your bit rate down to 15 meg or 25 meg. It's soft and blurry and you're going to lose, if you've got a high quality camera, you're going to lose some of that sharp crispness by over compressing your video file. What you're watching right now is 30p, a 50 meg bit rate. That gives me the sweet spot to when I upscale that into 4k with HDR. I'm recording in 1080p by the way, I'm not recording in 4k. I will transcode up to 4k when I render because then, uh, and thanks for being asked this in the questions in my previous video, YouTube gives gives you higher bandwidth in a 4K video. Also, there are some people out there who look for 4K video streams to watch. And if you encode in HDR, that's a little bit, the, the jury's still out on whether YouTube supports that fully yet, but at least you know you've got your high quality color master in the can ready. I wouldn't worry about 4K unless, as I said before, your audience is a 75 inch screen and it's not, it's a mobile phone. And I promise you, even if your phone had the pixels, you would not be able to see the difference unless you were sitting that close to it with a magnifying glass. Like I say, resolution not that important refresh rate and your bit rate very important so all, everything you're looking at here is 1080 30p at a 50 meg bit stream and that's pretty good nobody seems to see a difference when i go up higher and here's the thing okay the only time i would say i consistently want to have 100 megabit stream lower compression is if i'm doing it outside with a lot of motion in frame now on a video like this when it's just my face and there's not much happening in the background 50 megs actually gives you pretty much everything because there's not much changing from frame to frame. Therefore, the compression algorithm that runs against these videos leaves all of this around me alone. It never changes that. It only looks at my face, a tiny part of the frame. So a 50 meg bitrate is absolutely perfect for this sort of video. However, if you're running sports or you're running a lot of full frame motion, so the whole screen is moving frame to frame, then you want to wind up your bitrate to 100 or higher, whatever, the highest you can go. The more you've got going on in the frame the higher you want your bitrate to be because then there's less compression and there's more detail being captured in each frame hope that makes sense so that's it i hope this was useful to you thank you so much for watching what do you think what do you what are your recording settings let me know drop them in the comments below as always please share like subscribe hit that alarm bell if you're new to the channel you want to be kept informed of all the videos i put out i shall see you in the next show popping up over there is the last video i put out and below that is the one youtube thinks you should watch next sometimes it's the same video don't blame me. YouTube did it. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next show. Bye.